love you all. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Oh, I missed you so. Dana Prino will never host again. <laughs> Too many of the comments were positive. <laughs> but we've got so many things going on, which means it's time for... Greg's I See a Trend That's Worthy of a Fantastic Monologue. Wait, 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 that's not what I ordered. It, you left something out. Oh, uh, sorry, Greg. Uh, yes, uh, you don't get this brilliance on special report in your face, Brett Bear. Gutfeld rules. Yeah, that's more like it, vocal guy. So there are big changes afoot, and it's not just Ainsley Earhart quitting smokeless tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> She's not watching. <laughs> Boils down to one word, limits. We've reached them. Yep, we put our foot down like a drunk Paul Pelosi running a red light. <laughs> Let's start at the beginning, the recall of the SF school board members. After years of wokeness, voters finally put their sorry asses to sleep. Remember, they wanted to change the names of schools during a COVID crisis. The voters told them to hit the road. And in San Fran, that road is covered with <laughs> <laughs> There's Netflix telling its employees, if you're too sensitive to work here, don't. God, if I had a nickel for every time I said that when I was directing those snuff films in the 80s. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Same thing with Spotify, who backed Joe Rogan over Neil Young and other washed-up artists. Their cries for boycotts when ignored, like my assistant's request for bathroom breaks. <laughs> Not on my watch. So how about the media? Well, CNN top brass turns over as the new boss announces that partisanship is done. But nobody heard the announcement because his head was so far up Biden's ass. So like Kat's college degree, we'll believe it when we see it. <laughs> but at least CNN admits their Trump derangement poisoned their brand. Uh, I bet Brian Stelter is sweating right now. And it has nothing to do with taking the stairs. <laughs> This is overweight. <laughs> the Washington Post fires a woke reporter who badmouthed coworkers on Twitter. And after some wimpiness, the boss, they finally found their limit, and off she went like Jim Acosta's hairpiece after an Eric Swalwell fart. <laughs> Bill Maher now shows up every Friday, sounding like the bastard son of Henry Kissinger and Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> after years of progressivism, it feels like Maher found his limit, even through that cumulus cloud of pot smoke. SF lefty DA Chase Boudin got it recalled like a Toyota with defective airbags after the public had enough of violent crime. This may be a sign of more recalls aimed against pro-crime Soros-spawned wokesters. Johnny Depp wins a televised trial, the public largely agreeing with his side of the story. The Me Too defense didn't protect Amber Heard from facts. People saw through her crap. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out, she loves corn on the cob. Uh, Picnic season. Now Elon Musk announces he's voting Republican for the first time in his life. So what do all these things have in common? Well, people found their limits. The slippery slopes finally hit a brick wall. But let's not rejoice just yet. There are other places also screaming for that brick wall. Black on black crime. At one point, does the murder rate seem unacceptable to Democrats? We're already there, but not the Dems. Why is that? What's their limit? Artificial intelligence. Are we paying attention to it to even know if there is a limit? Because limits to technology are elusive. We never think about them until it's too late when we're all enslaved by sexy robots. <laughs> That's my dream. <laughs> Children as gender experiments. If you told me the solution for gender confusion in a preteen is surgery and hormones, I'd say who died and made you Joseph Mengele? The only transitioning this administration should be concentrating on is the one that's going to happen in 2024 when they hand the White House keys back to the adults. Yeah, huh? <laughs> Excuse me. I'll take it. Why not? By the way, sex ed in high school, I get it, fine. But gender instruction for toddlers... Knock it off, you pervert. And yes, drag shows are entertaining. It's awesome seeing performers who are bad at singing, comedy, and stripping all at the same time. But for kids, really? Nah. 
And what are those teachers' unions? Haven't they had enough of this? Haven't we had enough of them? They destroy our schools, then come out against school choice, so you're stuck with them. Is it time to say, my kid, my choice? It's happening with the school boards, but behind every school board is a school union. Trans athletes, there aren't that many, so what's the problem? Well, when biologically female athletes are no longer winning, where's that limit going to come up? Trans activists don't care. When should you care? Illegal immigration, when do we ask what's the right number of people to let in? Determine that, then protect the southern border. But we don't know our limits because no one wants to ask the number. Split the issue into process and illegality and you solve the problem. January 6th, this rehash never ends. And for one purpose only, politics. Do we have a limit to this media party con collusion? It's basically Liz Cheney's audition for The View. <laughs> At least there, she'll be known as the hot one. A sexist would say. And here's a tip. When casting propaganda, don't make Adam Schiff a leading man. That's like casting Flipper to play Lassie. <laughs> and we're seeing people everywhere pushing back against those who push our limits. Yeah, so that's when I found out I'm not adopted. Oh, excuse me. Can we get some water, please? Sure, you want sparkling tap or meatless? Uh, tap's fine. Yeah, so I love this place. Uh, Michelin star chef. Uh, the menu is incredible. I think you're gonna. Oh my gosh, excuse me. Excuse... That's enough. That's enough. Who cares? It's free. No limits, man. Never classy. She is so sassy. Feeling my line, slowly losing her mind. Can't keep opinions to herself. With white fragility on her bookshelf. Overeducated and undermedicated. She won't be happy till we're all castrated. She's the one that we call Dirtbag Deb. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry about that, folks. Deb, you can't keep doing this. Overserving the customers, plus, you filed 82 HR complaints since Tuesday. Sorry, I care about creating an inclusive, non toxic work environment. <laughs> You don't even work here. Don't mansplain my employment status to me. Uh -huh. Well, I've never once interviewed you for a job. Oh, that reminds me. I'd like to file a complaint yeah, yeah, about yeah. you denying me an interview. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is a Let's patriarchal about, yeah. Thanks school. for coming by. All right. Take care. You guys want yeah. Nah, jerkbag Deb. The point is, society progresses under the assumption that it's actual progress. But like criminal justice reform, it's not the case when ideology replaces reality. Instead, society breaks down, too, when people suffer. You know, just today, I had to let go of my butler. It's very, very sad. But we are waking up and retaking control, because if we've learned anything in the past couple years, it's when it comes to limits, nothing should be off limits, including term limits. Let's welcome tonight's guest. He's never serious, even on Sirius. Ah. <laughs> Comedian co-host of the Jim Norton Sam Roberts show on Sirius XM, Jim Norton. Yes. Yes. Way to thank the audience, Jim. A lot of people don't do that. She got more time on the sideline than a jug of Gatorade. Former sportscaster Michelle Tafoya. <laughs> He's not your father's Republican leader. He just looks like he is. <laughs> American Conservative Union Chairman Max Schlapp. <laughs> She's got more fake hair than a British judge. <laughs> yeah. Fox News contributor, <laughs> Kat Tip. Jim, always a pleasure to see you. Thank you, Greg. It's great to see you. It's great to hear. You know, you are a political shaman. Yes. People go to you for the <laughs> deepest questions when there's a political turmoil. Are you sensing, like me, that there's a, a movement towards limits? And do limits help you in your life? That's an excellent question. It's Greg. a two part question. It is, yes. And I forgot the first part already. <laughs> the first part is do you see a trend coming in this uh, idea of limitations? And do you 
find limits helpful in your life? Um, limits are not helpful in my life, but women don't want to sleep with me, so there are limits. Um, <laughs> and as far as limits, are they going to change anything? Is there a trend coming? No. I think we're deluding ourselves, hoping every time something happens, like, now it's about to change, it's not going to change. Mm. It's not going to change. Well, that's very negative, Jim. Sorry, guys. My apologies. Can, <laughs> let's go back. It's going to change. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, we can edit that out. It is going to change, right? It's going to be great. No, no, no. <laughs> it's never going to change. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. And then we're all going to die. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like my inner monologue. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly what I say every morning yeah. when I wake up. Yeah. It's painful. Michelle, you live in middle America, which a lot of people, you know, it's weird because that's in America, unlike the Middle East. Uh. Right. <laughs> How fed up are they? Tell us. Well, you know what? It's interesting because I drove to my son's baseball game yesterday, and it was way out in the countryside, and I felt like, you know, well, I ain't that America. I felt like John Mellencamp was singing in my head. But then I turn around, I go back to the Twin Cities, and it's very, very liberal in the in Minneapolis, St. Paul. Um, I can't decide what I'm more disturbed by right now. The fact that you've just said it's not, it's only going to get worse, or the fact that I never want to eat corn on the cob ever again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, it's a, both of them are depressing. <laughs> I was hopeful, Greg, until I was invited onto a podcast recently, and I was invited with this. We want to talk about your great career and your new podcast. We think, is it okay if we talk to you for about 30 or 40 minutes? It was someone I knew from my past, so I said, okay. Yeah. The second I got on, bam, was ambushed with, you're anti-CRT, you're a racist, you're a, you cannot read the Florida law without it being a homophobe. I mean, I was absolutely ambushed. Mm -hmm. And just when I was thinking that all these signs from Netflix and CNN, things were turning in that direction that you alluded to, Boy, did I get a wake-up call. There is, like, there are these things that pop out again and again. Yeah. And, I and I mean, even on this network, sometimes it happens. But we won't get into that, will we, Kat? <laughs> I guess not. No. <laughs> Matt, uh, <laughs> are you noticing a kind of a wave? I think it started with young kin. Don't you kind of, like, totally. you know? It was like a revolt in the Commonwealth of Virginia. It was yeah. parents, you know, they were called domestic terrorists for saying, why is my five-year-old reading about these sex acts with like you know cartoon books it was kind of insane and uh but i also think we have to separate what's going on in society from politics so is it going to change politically hell yes we're going to kick their butts it's going to be an amazing red wave not so much because the republican party is so perfect but these guys have bungled everything you can imagine the real question michelle's talking about is even if the voters revolt can you actually change all the insanity that's rolling through these institutions and through the schools. And I'm, you know, I'm more dubious until we have a lot of political success. Well, I guess, okay, so this is what good, then it goes back to what Jimmy's saying, which is like that it, it, it's, it, like, you're kind of saying that culturally, it always, it's entropy. It just always kind of goes towards bad. Well, it's not about what we're arguing about. Yeah. We love to argue and we love to be right. Mm -hmm. It's not about the issue. The issue is the excuse to attack each other. Mm -hmm. right. And we're always going to love attacking each other. So no matter what the issues are, we are still the same. We can blame Trump. We can blame Biden. doesn't matter. We're the same. It's mm -hmm. not going to change. Interesting. Sorry, I just wanted to bore everybody. No, no, no. <laughs> I think you, you hit a major point there, Kat. Care to yeah. respond to Jimmy's assertion that it's about human nature that we can't change? Yeah, I think that's true. I think everybody's <laughs> and <laughs> what? I uh, sorry, but all of us are. And the difference with this, I think, is it's way easier for some people to, you know, kind of gain power control. They don't have to really be good at anything. Mm -hmm. They don't have to develop a skill. They don't have to work really hard. They have to get upset and have their feelings be hurt and say, you know, you offended me for this reason that's on this list of reasons we consider, you know, things that are acceptable to consider offensive. And then you're the most powerful person in the room without actually having to do anything. Mm -hmm. So I think that's gonna be pretty difficult for people to give up, especially when it does actually, actually does work so often mm -hmm. where people are actually afraid to say that they've had enough of it. It's good that you have these examples where it is, but there are consequences for saying that you've had enough of something too, because then you're canceled. That's, that's another great point. Thank uh, you. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm very positive today. It's because yeah. Dana was guest hosting yesterday, and everybody liked how positive she was. <laughs> but you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rebut you, and I'm going to say that generally most Americans are nice, polite people, right? But I think they're running out of patience. It's like you can only mess with 
people for so long, and then they go, okay, this is now. And I think that's what pro how progress works. It's a little bit of chaos, and then it comes back, and then it gets chaotic. That's my positive spin on this. Well, Greg, that really hurts. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> I, I really took you apart just there. Yeah, yeah, a way to humiliate me in front of the audience. <laughs> But no, you know why I think it's that way? Because when you look at every, like, the pundit shows where everybody argues on every network has yeah. them, when's the last time on any of those you heard someone go, ah, you're right? Yeah, yeah. Never. never. Only here. Never, We yeah. do it here. Yeah. We do it here. No, I admit true. that I'm wrong almost every night. Yeah. Although it won't happen tonight. Because <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> All right, before we go, here's some news. I got new book tour dates. This is exciting. I'll be at Foxwoods Casino in Connecticut in October. That sounds exciting. And Smart Financial Center in the Houston area in November. Why can't we just say Houston? It's pretty big. I don't understand that. But get tickets at gcutfelt.com and find out why. And up next, an NFL coach opines and ends up with a massive fine. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.